The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19147. We're going to start the show like we usually do, looking at the German DAX. That's the big reason why we're having this big up move in stocks early this morning. Uh, you can see the beautiful ABCD pattern that completed there just a few days ago, much like we were doing there on June 3rd on the new moon. And now we've started to go higher. We've just been informed. We've been up six days, 120 handles in the S&P. And we're due for a correction, but whether corrections come or not, I'm not sure. We're going to change focus a little bit and work on cycles, folks. I'm going to post you a cycle that we've just found. And we're going to start looking at it a little more clear. This month, very unusual, we get to look at the moons of Jupiter. If you have some powerful binoculars, you know, for the 50 power, you'll notice the full moon there. And then you can see Jupiter there with its moons. There's two of the moons of Jupiter. I think it has six or seven moons. I'm not even sure. But you can see both of those with the regular binoculars. Now, how do you make any money with that? Well, fortunately, I've been able to develop a program to show you how to handle those full moons of uh, Jupiter. So I'm going to share it with you. This is only going to be a one-time event. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to bring it up here so that you'll be able to see it. No, that's not Mount Lemmon, Jim. Those are the Wasatch Mountains in the salt, up by Salt Lake City is where that was taken. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll notice here that the oscillators that I'm using on the bottom, these are all proprietary. Uh, you want to buy when they're going up and sell when they're going down. You can see the lines very, very clear. Uh, how to trade the S&P off of this. And if you would like to subscribe uh, to this one-time event service of trading the moons of Jupiter, uh, you'll contact me directly. It's $3,000 a month, uh, 10 months in advance. And uh, just make up, oh, I'm sorry, folks, the last one has just been sold out. So you'll have to catch us on the flip side the next time I come up with uh, uh, something interesting. Folks, someone sent me this chart and asked me what he was doing wrong. I, I, I really... I, I didn't know what to say. Uh, I mean, there's so much stuff here that I don't think anybody could dis determine, uh, you know, what what to do. So I told him, I said, just go back and try to just look at a bar chart and see if prices were going up and, you know, whether prices were going down or not. I referred to him. I said, you know, even the Elliott Wave people, you know, have some simple things that make it real easy. They have these things called the... <laughs> Yeah, sell Mortimer, sell. Get back in there. Anyway, you can see the, you know, the structures of these things. Their their markets go up, down, sideways. That's what you're trying to do with pattern recognition. We know we know two things. One, they repeat over and over again. That's one thing. And the second thing is, the repetition that they repeat in is is predictable within limits. And that's what Dr. Lowe proved in his book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Streets. All you have to do is study it. Look at the ABCD swings on this. I mean, they're, they're, they're harmonic. They go to harmonic numbers of 618, 786, 1.27, the ABCD structure there. Do they work all the time? Of course not. But nothing works all the time. That's the key to this. So try to keep it as simple as possible. I don't use oscillators because oscillators are based on usually moving average or uh, that, that type of thing that are they're indicators that are based on past data. And all we're doing is to try to predict what we think the future is going to be. And that's the real key to uh, you know what you're trying to do. Are you going to be right all the time? You're never going to be right all the time. Impossible. Just nebahachi, never going to happen. You know, so that's, uh, you got to pay attention to that. Okay, someone's asked me, uh, uh, okay, I want to learn to get, yes, I remember that. Hold on one second here. We want to uh, uh, get over here to the uh, uh, next one I wanted to cover, which was the, uh, the most important chart this month, uh, starting the month, for me, will be the one that I post next. And I will give it to you right here. Let's just get it up here, and we'll be able to take a look at it. This is the Treasury note chart, okay? 
Friday, we hit the exact 61% retracement on the weekly chart going back to uh, of 2016. That was the high. We made a 61% retracement of the high from 2016. Not only that, folks, we did it very, very unusual. The fact is the 30-year the Treasury bond could not make uh, new highs. Uh, it made it missed the high by oh maybe six or eight pips, but the the Treasury notes went up and made a 1.27 expansion of the high we made last uh, Friday. So from Friday to Friday, the T notes went up and rallied to a 1.27 expansion, exactly at the 1.618 number. Folks, that that to me it really means a lot. Whether it does or not, I don't know. But those are things that. When you get to be uh, old, you get, they get excited about things like that. <laughs> well, today, um, oh, one other thing that happened on Friday. We had a drop in open interest. Uh, believe it or not, the open interest in the Treasury bonds dropped. Okay, not a very good sign. The open interest in the Treasury notes was up marginally, given the fact that the news was so bullish and it was an upside uh, breakout. So we'll see whether that's going to be the, uh, you know, to be the case or not. So we'll have to see whether that's going to be or not. Okay, let's move on here and uh, talk a little bit more about these notes and bonds because this is a real quagmire for me because I get emails uh, all week and long. I've got five of them, actually, uh, two of them from people that I haven't heard from ever before, and they were talking about the negative interest rate scenario and the fact that Stanley Druckermiller, the great trader from George Soros to Zero, along with Jimmy Rogers, had sold uh, his stocks, and he was buying Treasury bonds because he believes the yield is going to go to zero, and that will be a huge move if it does that. Anyway, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, folks. I really don't. Those guys are really smart. And when I read what they're telling me, why negative interest rates are coming, it doesn't make any sense to me. I must really be naive. I don't know. So I look at the charts. I do know one thing. If we get back above that 61% retracement in Treasury notes, that will trade the, the, the spot note, the September to 128. If we get that above 128, I'm going to say, uh, sayonara to the short side, and we'll see whether that's going to be uh, the case. But right now, they did gap lower, and that was a big surprise. You know, the bonds dropped $1,000 Sunday night on the opening. We, mo we moved $1,000 higher in the S&P on the opening. And gold, uh, we'll, we'll talk about gold when we come up, you know, to the next break, but uh, uh, the main one is this Treasury note and Treasury bond charts. These are uh, these are long-term charts, and stopping at those exact numbers is very important because the Treasury note market is the largest of all the futures markets by a factor of six. There's nothing that is not even six times as big as the volume and open interest in the Treasury note. So that's that's what that means. Uh, it, to me, it's important. So. You know, we'll see whether that's going to be the case or not. Uh, we're going to cover the gold after the break here, of course. And then uh, later on, we want to talk about the corn because the corn is setting up uh, uh, really nicely here. And uh, also, we want to talk about the, the little piggies. And uh, so we'll see whether those uh, work out or not. But uh, that's where 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, Ruby's asked a question about uh, what technical analysis was like, you know, way back in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. Uh, folks, there was just virtually nothing available there. Uh, there. There really wasn't very much happening at all. 1975, Futures Magazine uh, came out uh, that later became Stocks and Commodities. Uh, they would publish articles. Uh, Trader's World from Larry Jacobs out of uh, uh, Kansas City came out with something uh, in late, uh, early, mid mid 80s, uh, there were a few newsletters that talked about it, but there was really no access to this stuff. The only way you, if you had access to something like Don Max Investment Center Bookstore, which was there in Santa Monica, well, it was West LA, uh, you had everything you needed. But there, but the, the, even then, it was these were the old books by Schaubacher and, and uh, uh, you know all these other guys, you know, that were really uh, uh, it, it just was amazing. Oh, George Cole. Uh, and John Hill was the one that led me to that. So I had access to that, and Don Mack knew which books were the best. And so, you know, I had access to look at it. But we really didn't start to get any of this uh, of any value at all until the early 80s, around 1983, 84, is when uh, CompuTrack came out uh, out of uh, New Orleans with um, – uh, gosh, I can't even think of Tim's uh, <laughs> Tim's last name, but uh, that was Walt Bressert and uh, some of these guys that brought the the charts of the uh, on the computers so we could see them. You could actually look at these. Before, all we had was the Bunko Ramo boards at the places like Dean Witter and Conti Commodity and places like that, so you could see the charts come in. If you wanted an intraday chart, the only thing that was available was ADP, Automatic Data Processing, and it was ten dollars to put a five-minute chart out uh, of soybeans or whatever you wanted to see. Remember, we didn't even start trading gold until 1972, so we're looking at about 20 different commodities. There was really not much there and very little to write about. Even the old masters, the, the, the guy that did it all was Gartley. I mean, he was way ahead of everybody else. I mean, Elliot did some stuff. 1938 that became popular later on, but Gartley had covered all that stuff in his book, from 1935, and well, that's my opinion, of course. But that's basically it. And over the years, it became popular to write books, and used to make money off of it. Now you can't because all the books are printed on the internet overnight, 
and the, the publishers go crazy and Amazon gets rich. But, uh, you know, the, the information now is just quite a bit. But you had to dig it out back in those days, and that was the that was the key to do it. The only way you dig it out is if you were, you know, trying to build your way back, and that's what happened to me. So, uh, anyway, that's what I'm watching here as we look at some of these things. Uh, let's move over here to the gold market because we had some big things happening here in gold. Um, I covered this in Sunday night's video that I sent out here. You'll be able to see. We made that double top up here. We took out the highs of February. You, can you imagine that silver is only at a 50% retracement of that level and platinum <laughs> hasn't even moved? And we took out this high. This tells us that my first indication was that we were most probably getting ready to have a correction uh, in the gold after we hit that and the way we closed here at 1344. I said that in the newsletter. I said, you want to sell your gold on Sunday night? And the reasoning for that is that we hit all these major numbers. Look at this one. This is the XAU, folks. And remember, this is the, this, oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Let me get this up here so we can see it a little better here. Here is the XAU. This is the, the actual index for the gold silver index. We went up and made the 61% retracement of that high that we took out in gold. In other words, the gold took out that high from February. All we did in the XAU was make the 61% retracement. If we take a look at the ETF for the uh, XAU, you'll see that that is the GDX, and that is, uh, you know, uh, we took that out, and we're probably getting ready for correction, and that's what I, I thought we were doing. We're up eight days, and when you looked at the, the sum total of the gold, the silver, the platinum, all of them, it said most probably we were getting ready for a correction. And what the correction is going to do, and 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 all we're doing is we're just looking at numbers, folks. We we went from uh, we went from 1267 in the gold all the way up to 12 1354. Okay, that's ninety dollars uh, an ounce, and just a regular harmonic number down, thirty four dollars takes you to 13 1320. So 1320 is what we're looking at this week for our potential bottom in the gold market. Now, if we go below 1320, then that's going to be a totally different thing, and we'll have to review it. But that's what what I think is going to be happening here. Uh, and remember, you know, you're wrong a lot, and, you know, and sometimes you're right. Like my grandma said, you got to kiss a lot of frogs in the old pond before you find the princess, and she was certainly right. She also gave me two quarters when I graduated from high school, and I said, Grammy, I said, what's this for? She said, well, when you get on the bus and you don't find the girl that you have your dreams on the first bus, you've got a quarter for the second bus, and I still got that second quarter. Anyway, let's move on here to uh, talk a little bit uh, about the platinum market because it has been lagging really badly. We've had a couple questions about it. Today it's actually moving counter to the rest of them, uh, mainly short covering, and we'll see what's going on here. You'll be able to see here's where we are. I think we're trading around 8, uh, right where we are right about now, around 8.06. We made a 78% retracement overnight, and then we bounced a little bit, so it's acting uh, actually okay. My long-term view on gold has not changed. I just believe we're due for a correction here after a $90 run, and the fact that we're seeing these divergences between the, the gold-silver index, the GDX, and the silver. I didn't even bring the silver to your attention, but here, remember, we just made a new high in February. Look where silver is. Look where silver is compared to the February high. That was 1620. We're a dollar an uh, you know a dollar an ounce uh, lower. I mean that was 1620. We're at uh, you know a lot lower than that. So that's not that's not a good sign. We're at 1475 in silver. We're down 25 cents in silver today. So uh, we're getting a correction. This is what we we're expecting to happen. And you know sometimes your expectations are not met, and that's usually the signs of all your frustrations. Now we've been asked to. Uh, take a uh, look at uh, Bitcoin. I wanted to bring it up here to show you this. I'm going to give you two versions of Bitcoin because it's a long-term version in here. But uh, this is the one that goes back to January of, uh, two th of 2018 when we were making that uh, uh, big move up there at 19,000. If you look at it really closely from that high there at 19,000, if you'll go down and see that three drive pattern that is there, uh, that started in about November, late November of that year into January. You can see three really nice drives. If you blew that up and took the time to, to look at it closely, which I certainly would hope you would do, it would really give you an idea 
that uh, this three drive pattern that was at, we were on the air at that time talking about it. Let's blow this up a little more so the folks can see it even better. And uh, then we'll see what we got here. Anyway, uh, now we, we came all the way down. We went a little below the 78% level. That low actually was around 81%. And now we've rallied up uh, quite a bit here since uh, December. Uh, we're trading around 7,900, uh, I believe. And I think we're going to go uh, back off a little bit. We're, we're seeing some signs of some really good uh, correction coming in here. And we'll be able to uh, see what's going to uh, to see what's going to happen. Okay, uh, hold on. Uh, I have a big horse left at my front door. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the corn. Um, we topped here about two weeks ago in the midst of all this problem with water, which still exists. That was the 1.618 expansion going back to June of last year. Uh, we've been coming down relatively nicely. We're trading at around 4.30 a bushel today in Christmas corn. 
Um, when we get down to 420, should we get there, we're going to be interesting to see because we'll be fulfilling a technical picture uh, right out of the textbook for H.M. Gartley. Um, that will be, there was a gap there at 419. Uh, there's also an ABCD structure. You can see that going back to uh, late May to where we are right now. We're down, you know, we're into the second week of uh, June already. Uh, this crop, uh, I mean, this, this corn that's not planted now is not going to get harvested most probably, folks. So there will be a problem in the corn market. The question is, how bad is it going to be and if it occurs? Now, remember, I'm I'm a technician, folks, and I have a real difficulty time because I have a lot of friends in the business that, you know, give me their best shots of things that they uh, think are going to happen, and 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 frankly, I I can't I can't assimilate the fundamentals because it it really messes me up. So I I try to uh, listen to what it is and then just shake it off and look at the charts, and that's not an easy thing to do because, as a technician, you have to decide, you know, what do you believe in? Do you believe in what you're reading or do you believe in what you're seeing? And that's why I came up with the title of the book, Trade What You See, you know, not what you uh, not what you think. Uh, that actually title came from Leslie's uh, Jufless, the girl that helped me write that book. Uh, her husband, Gary, was the one that came up with that, and uh, I thought it was one of the better titles that I'd heard, and I've used that as the uh, lead on all these things. But uh, this gap that we have at the 382 level is going to be a perfect 38% retracement of the low we made back on the 13th of May. Uh, we do still have problems with water across the Midwest. There's no question about that. But uh, getting corn in now, uh, sometimes uh, you'll get something, but it won't be anywhere near the yields that you're looking at. And we're running into some problems here worldwide because with all these tariffs and stuff, you know, the world does need food. The one thing, the difference between, you know, the crude oil contract and the corn contract is that oil is indigestible. So, you know, everybody, you know, they do like to eat. So this is going to be really interesting what happens here. I'm not sure whether this means anything with the tariffs or not, I really don't know. I, I have no c concept of whether that means anything or not. All I know is if we get down to that level at 420, we're 10 cents away right now, uh, that would, and I would love to see it take three or four days to get there. That means the selling would be, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, abated. So I hate to see it make it the first day, it'd be a little scary. But it still might work. I still have, I'm still going to buy there at 420 because that's the ABCD, that's the Gardley, that's the Gap. I mean, bada bing, bada boom. It's the old highs. I mean, if you can't do that, you know, you know, put on your little white cap and go to work for McDonald's flipping burgers because uh, this is what you wait for, you know, as a technician. The question that Ruby asked earlier about what was available back in those early days was very little. We didn't have the CFTC until 1975. And I think uh, the NFA came in later in around 1980 or something, and uh, maybe as early 80s. And, uh, you know, of course, the SEC had nothing to do with that stuff, but that's when we start getting some regulation with margins and things like that. But it was basically the wild, wild west. It was the, the firms actually determined what the margins were. And you could trade with a debit balance at the firms if uh, they allowed you to because it was their money. And... Uh, I had to happen, that happened to me once with Conti back in uh, 1974. Anyway, that's what the corn looks like. The beans look uh, okay. Uh, the beans look like they could be bottoming. They don't have that beautiful pattern that the corn has. The corn has just an absolute perfect bottom there that looks pretty good. Uh, we've been asked to take a look at the uh, uh, Augustine. Is that that's that's uh, uh, is that down on the day, Steve? I think it is down a little bit. Uh, what is the low of the day, Steve? Do you know? I on the on the live hogs. I'm not able to to get live prices when I'm on the air. It just doesn't allow me to do that for a lot of different reasons. So uh, we'll see if that's going to be the case. But I don't uh, whether it gets to those lows or not. I'm not even sure. Um, the question that we've had is about the uh, the crude oil. I believe crude oil has made a, a really significant uh, bottom in here, folks. I. I focused on this last week a little bit, and again this week uh, in the newsletter, uh, it will be able to take a look at this is uh, 82.65. Okay, all right. Currently, it is trading at uh, yeah, there now. Hold it, scrolling. Thank you very much. 82.65. That's fine. Let's take a look here at this uh, the spot crude oil. Uh, you'll notice that the low down here, the 50 61% retracement came in at 50. 
Uh, 25. The low on a fast tick was at 50.60. We rallied four dollars a barrel in just a matter of you know two days. That's a very very positive sign. I thought there would be strong support in around 53.90 uh, in the in the crude oil. All that is is just basically 88 cents off the top that we made overnight. That happens to be 80 points is the harmonic number. Uh, in the uh, crude oil, you see that happening more and more, and so I just thought that might be the low. Uh, whether it is or not, you know, who knows? Or you know, just like anything else, it's just a, you know, it's just a uh, sophisticated a swag as a sophisticated, wild accumulated guess. But uh, the the amount of risk on that is only about 40 pips, which is $400. So you can trade a you know, a fifty-eight thousand dollar, what is it, fifty-eight, a fifty-nine, sixty thousand dollar contract, roughly, for uh, no, fifty-three thousand dollar contract for four hundred bucks, which is really good risk to reward. Um, someone's asked a question about the gold, folks. I just mentioned I I will be a buyer of gold at thirteen twenty in August gold. Uh, I would like to see it happen in three days, not one day, and we're down sixteen dollars from the high we made uh, overnight. And no more than that, $17. So uh, I would like to see it happen in a couple of days with a little bit of zigzag action up and down and then get there maybe uh, really nicely, uh, maybe Thursday or Friday at 1320. That would be a very bullish sign. If we get below 1320, that's going to tell me that this gold market might have a lot more problems. And we have to respect that double top up there in the gold that we took out at uh, 1352 uh, and a half. We went to yeah, we went to 1354, and uh, that was not a very good follow through. And especially when you looked at the XAU, the GDX, the silver, and the platinum, all of those things are telling you that that's why you know you want to be out of the gold right now. In fact, if you got the video that I sent out Sunday night, my quagmire was: Do I stay long the gold here, or do I get out? because of the fact that we have all these divergences and I felt it would be better to get out because uh, the divergences were telling me there was not a lot of strength in these other indices that we look at along with the gold and silver because they usually have a high correlation together. That was my thought. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, just like everything else. So far it worked, but you know, some, some days it doesn't, who knows. The currencies are acting okay. Uh, when we get back to the break, we, we want to talk a little bit about the um, the dollar index, because we talked about it Friday, the fact that it was setting at such a, a real, real critical level, and it held that level so far, at least, but uh, it's still quite early in the game to see if uh, it's going to, to keep that up. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I got a <laughs> flash request to describe <laughs> my opinion of the uh, theory about negative interest rates. I, I, I don't know what to say. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I've had some really smart people, Byron Tucker being number one in there, uh, along with a couple other people trying to sell, tell me that this is going to be something in the future. And, you know, they probably will be right, but I don't understand it. So I, I can't describe it because I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> which is you know, prevalent a lot of times, but I really don't know anything about that. It just doesn't make any economic sense to me at all. So whether that's going to be the case or not, I don't really know. Uh, we'll see. It's uh, it's just a money game that these people are uh, playing, and uh, you know whether all of these things are important or not. I I really don't know. Uh, all I know is that uh, we've got a uh, situation where we've got what 22 trillion dollars in debt, and uh, we're fighting with everybody else, and the debt stock market goes up because it does its own thing. The stock market has a bullish bias as long as we stay. Let's take a look at this, folks. Here's the S&P. And, you know, if you want to see, you know, my idea of Elliott Wave, here it is. There's your ABCD pattern at the 382 retracement, right, the new moon when the Bradley model was turning. Uh, we got up. Uh, we're almost at the 78% level. That comes in at 2908. We're only, what, 13 handles away, which we should make that by 11 o'clock in the morning. Whether we do or not, I don't know, but it should uh, – get to this level. Uh, the reason for the gap up from what they told us this morning, uh, real early, which was about, uh, what, three in the morning, uh, New York time, that uh, 12 o'clock Tucson time, it was uh, the fact that the German DAX was due to be a lot higher, being five hours different. So, uh, and it is higher and it did go higher. Remember, they have the same problems that we do. So all of this stuff is moving around, but uh, I don't know any anything more than that. I mean, everybody has an opinion on it, and a lot of these guys are smart. They send me articles from guys like Lacey Hunt and Ben Hunt and uh, John Williams from the New York Fed and, you know, some of these other things where people are talking about. And, you know, what they say and what they do can be a whole lot different. I've seen this with Warren Buffett my whole career because uh, I've watched him, you know, uh, manipulate, not manipulate, but use the silver market to get rid of huge positions. I, I have charts of that. You know, that uh, if you ever wanted to see him, that, uh, you know, where, where it shows where Berkshire Hathaway, you know, was supposedly to have a 10 percent of all the above ground silver. And yet when the report came out, they were selling at the high day, you know, and it was uh, and you could see what was happening because the open interest was dropping. That's why I'm looking at the Treasury notes and Treasury bonds. If this is really bullish. And if it is really bullish, then the open interest should be increasing. People should be putting money in to negative interest rates and buying the notes and bonds. They are not doing that. We've been here two weeks. They've done nowhere but but roll over. That's not a good sign. Now, if they go above that 128 in that uh, Treasury notes, guess what? I get the old garlic out, 
put a little parsley on the old crow and I start eating crow again. I love the taste of it. You put enough garlic on it, it tastes exactly like escargot. So when that happens, then I'll get out. Other than that, I want to see it. The same thing with the corn. I still think we're going to make 420. I might be wrong, but you know, we'll see. But it's been two weeks now that we've been in this consolidation, and that corn that corn crop is in big trouble. There's no uh, t uh, the pepper sauce is too much for me, Mr. Z. I, it's a little too hot. I just add a little extra garlic. So anyway. <laughs> Marshall, you're making my mouth water, my friend. Marshall is telling us about my favorite pizza place here in Tucson, Rocco's out of Chicago. Man, it is really a good place. And, of course, we, uh, he and his wife, uh, we go there. We also go to Gu uh, Guadalajara. If you guys ever get to Tucson, you know, come by, and we'll take you out to some of these nice places to eat. It's a good old, good old cowboy cuisine. You don't have to worry about the black tie waiters and stuff, but uh, it's a fun place. Uh, fun place to hang out. The temperature today is going to be 95 big ones, which for you, it's about 80 degrees just about any place else because we're at 2,500 feet here in the desert and um, there are very little humidity. As long as you don't get above 103 here in the desert, it's really balmy. But uh, well, when you get above 105, it, it hurts. And of course, you get up to Phoenix, which is uh, 900 uh, 900 uh, above sea level. We're at 2,500 here in Tucson. Uh, you're you're really hot up there. It'll get to be one one 108, 109. It's much much hotter, and you've got to be even more careful. You know, being outside. And, and just for you, those of you that I, I got to kill some time here. But the, one of the things that you have to do when you're in the desert, it's it's not. Uh, what, what where you, when you're in the desert, it's your skin that's the problem because your skin is your biggest place. For or uh, losing your water, and that's where you get dehydrated. And by the time you are thirsty, you're in big trouble. So you got to continue drinking water all the time. You should have no problem. Put on sunscreen, and it's actually a pretty good place. Just because we have more dermatologists here in the Southwest than all the rest of the country per capita, should tell you that you know skin cancer is not a good thing. So you got to pay uh, close attention to that. All right, I had one other thing that, oh, I wanted to tell you a funny story. Uh, my good friend Steve Shapiro from the old days at Pismo Beach, uh, we used to go there every Monday morning. We would go down for locks and bagels. Uh, Mumsy, Steve's mom, would uh, make bagels uh, from scratch, and we had fresh salmon right off the dock and uh, cream cheese, and we did that every Monday. Whoever was in town, Bryce, uh, Dr. Jimmy, uh, or uh, Mark Douglas, whoever it was, we always had a big group there. And anyway, Steve called me and told me he talked to one of my students from many, many years ago, Bruno out of Connecticut. I worked with Bruno for three days. I couldn't get him to understand A, B, C, D. Three days, nothing, and his, he said thank you. He was gonna leave, and I, I thought he left to go home. When I came in Monday, for the breakfast, there was uh, Bruno sitting at the table with Mumsy and Steve and Bryce Gilmore and a couple other people. I, what are you still doing here? Oh, we got Stanley Druckermiller on the line. Stanley, are you there? No, this is not, <laughs> this is not Stanley Druckermiller. I, I know, John. I have. Sorry. Are you still <laughs> what can with I me there? What can I do for you, John? Yes. Hey, I wanted to let you know. You, I, I thought I caught you this morning when you were saying that someone had emailed you over the weekend and said. Druckenmiller had liquidated his stock portfolio and went yes. to bonds. Yes. Well, he was on CNBC with Joe Kernan, and uh -huh. he clarified that position. He said, no, I did not liquidate my stock portfolio. I hedged myself, okay, and I went and bought some bonds. He said, oh. I'm sorry that I did that because he did it just before we had that big, big jump in the stock market. He did it the day before, okay? Uh -huh. So his timing was good to hedge himself, but then, boom, the hedge cost him a, a bunch of money, okay? Mm -hmm. So to clarify, if you look up on YouTube, you'll see him interviewed by Joe Kiernan. Wow. I think it was last this Friday. Is, this is great. I really, really appreciate this, John, because <laughs> I, I might get two or three emails uh, uh, on a weekend, you know, asking about, I got six just on this one subject. So that's right. a good thing to do. I'll look that up, and uh, maybe I'll just send it out to let people look at it. Because this is what happens, you know, people see, they say something, and it's not what really happens. It's just because you tell, if you have 25 people in the room and you start, a, you know, a, a, a secret on one, and you go to the end, you know, you're going to realize that that secret's not even going to be anywhere near what it started 25 people ago. And that's a perfect example 
of uh, some right. of those things that we're watching. You know what I mean? You're so right. Yeah. You know, did you did you hear the story about David Ortiz this morning, the baseball player? No, I did. No, I did not. Could you stay with us and repeat it? We'll be right sure. back okay. after this break. I'll, I'll, I'll. You bet. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page page of tfnn.com and sign up today this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com okay we're talking with john out of detroit and you were telling us about david ortiz uh, i yeah, noticed now that they're chatting that he was shot tie that together with Druck, the Druckenmiller story, I can't mm -hmm. tell if what we're getting in the financial uh, publications is fake news or not. And the reason I bring that up with Druckenmiller, like I said, I read the story about him, you know, getting out of everything, going to bonds, and then I see Joe Karen in an interview, and he said, that's not what I said. So, you know, is with, with the David Ortiz thing, I get up this morning, I read that he was shot in a drive-by shooting, okay? Then mm -hmm. I'm coming home from work, and I hear he was shot inside a bar. A guy walked in and just put the gun up to him and shot him in the back, could have shot him in the head. Oh two different God. stories about what happened to Ortiz, two different stories with Druckenmiller. It's really wow. hard to depend on news. That's why when you say trade what you see, I believe that, Larry, because I'm, I'm so paranoid about what I hear on TV or, you know, the Internet or read, 
you can't tell if these people are setting you up with the drunken Miller story to go sell all your stock so that, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I appreciate great your point, show, Larry. Point, yeah. Trade what awesome. you see is, is the only way um, to go, to my, my opinion. My $20 check is in the mail to you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Hey, yeah, you, yeah, and call in when you get a chance. I love Detroit. I used to go up there to visit Mark. And uh, anyway, just uh, keep us in mind all the time. Great information, too. I really appreciate that. It really drives home the fact that you got to be careful about what you hear in the news these days because, man, it is really a jungle out there. There's no question about that. Well, Larry, so, I was taught a long time ago, you look at the chart, don't worry about the news. Whatever the, Whatever's on the chart, the news is already in the chart. Guys that are a lot that. smarter than yeah. the people reporting the news and reading it have already got their money on, on, you know, on what's going on on the chart, not on the would news. You like to, the news would you is like for the suckers like us. Yeah, yeah, would you like to do the newsletter for me for a couple of months so I can take a break? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey, John, thank I you so much. I, I, I wish you'd call in more often. It really makes my day. So I really appreciate it, and be safe. Thank you, Larry. You have a great day. Appreciate it. Love your show. Bye-bye. <laughs>